Well, isn't it a beautiful day? It's a gorgeous day. Yesterday, it's going to be hot. I thought the first service would be packed because it's going to be hot today. Now, Pastor Danny Youth told me that you are all sitting on the front row. So it doesn't work over there. You have to come over here. Because I can't see you behind the thing. So youth, all over here. Come on. Nobody's going over there. Yeah, we're all lopsided, you know. <laughs> I'm only doing that because Pastor Danny said they're all supposed to sit in the front. So, All right. So, this is our, I don't know how many week of Serve It Up. It started in May. And so we've, uh, Pastor Joe started this series, uh, getting our body to learn about serving it up. If you haven't got a bulletin, they're out there. You should have one. Sabrina, go get the whole front row some. Okay. Oh, well then. Go get a couple more, Frankie. Oh, look at this row over here. Somebody better go get some. You don't all have to go. Just go grab a handful. God. You know you're supposed to bring one of these in. All right. So serve it up. Uh, Pastor Joe started this series. He, He laid the groundwork, and then he took his medical leave and uh, I got the opportunity to see Pastor Joe yesterday. I had to go out to his house and pick up some cots for kids camp. And so I had an opportunity to talk with him. He's resting. He's healing. Uh, he, did, he told me he did go uh, huckleberry picking with Sally uh, a little while ago. And uh, he sort of over, did it and had a little relapse with his back. You know how it is if you've had sciatica or anything you never, or lower back, you never know if something's going to tweak it. Well, it, something tweaked it. And so, but he was moving around and, and got to talk with him. He's, he's healing, so just keep praying. He appreciates cards, and some of you sent cards, and some have sent texts. That, Cassie, I'm sorry, you can't sit over there. You've got to sit over with the rest of them. You know, you're part of the, you know. And uh, so he uh, appreciates all your prayers. Just keep praying for him. Um, He'll, he's going to know, he's, he has some doctor's appointment coming up within the next couple of weeks, and so he'll, he'll know more about what's going on. So we sort of set this verse up. This is our memory verse. You're supposed to be memorizing and meditating on this verse all during Serve It Up. So we're going to read it together. Here we go. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Okay. Now I want all the youth to read that. Yes. Just the youth. Okay. One, two, three. Now I want everybody. Oh, say the address. I'm sorry. Mark now I want everybody else to say it. Okay. Here we go. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. Now, without the words up there. Okay? One, two, three. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45. Now without me. One, two, three. So you have it now. That means meditate on it. Meditate means I think about it. You know, like when I, med- when I meditate on a verse, I, I try to memorize a verse, and then when I go for a walk, I, I focus on it. And I think about what it says to me and how I can apply that. So keep working on that. So today we're talking about serving together. And we're going to look at some scriptures from 1 Corinthians 12. But 
uh, not so many in here, but I'm going to talk about various ministries that we do have in the church. And there are a few people in here from some of those ministries. At the early service, we had a, a ton of people. But, you know, some people are down working in other places right now. And so, um, but there are some ministries that you may not know about. And the whole point of Serve It Up is let you know about some of the ministries that we have in our church and how you can get involved. So let's look at this verse. We're going to pray first. And so bow your heads. and We're just going to ask God to speak to us. Lord Jesus, we thank you. And Holy Spirit, we're grateful that you're present here. Holy Spirit, we know you are the one that teaches us. Your word is strong. Your word is powerful. Your word is that which brings conviction. Your word is that which brings con- encouragement. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us to be attuned and listen to what you're saying through these verses in 1 Corinthians. So thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. So let's start reading. Now, I'm going to try to let a lot of the word here speak for itself. This is God's word. I didn't write it. Nobody else. God's wrote, God wrote it. And he wrote it to all of us. This is his word to us. And so whenever we hear God's word, we have to, what are you saying to us? So the spirit has given each of us a special way of serving others. Some of us can speak with wisdom while others can speak with knowledge. But these gifts come from the same Spirit. To others, the Spirit has given great faith or the power to heal the sick or the power to work mighty miracles. Some of us are prophets and some of us recognize when God's Spirit is present. Others can speak different kinds of languages, and still others can tell what these languages mean. But it is the Spirit who does all this and decides which gifts to give to each of us. So from that scripture, we learn that each member of the body has a special way of serving others. So write that down. Open it up. Come on, youth. There's pencils behind you, too. And there's pencils behind them if they pens behind them. Each member of the body has a special way of serving others. Now, did you see some of those gifts that are mentioned there? Have you ever met a person that Maybe somebody in the body that they're just wise and you're going, man, where do they get that? They can just speak words of wisdom and it's like, I would have never thought of that. Or they just, have you ever known somebody just knows something? Special gift of knowledge and you're going, how did they know? (laughs) Sometimes it might be about you and it's like, how did they know? that I'm dealing with that. Um, Some people have, have you ever met somebody that has great faith? Their faith is just so strong. I know people in my life and I've just gone, wow, they have such strong faith. I wish I had that kind of faith. And and so there's there's prophets, there's, and, and I like this one. Some of us recognize when God's spirit is present. You know? When you recognize God's spirit is here, you just know it inside you. And some people have that gift that they know that. And look at that last phrase on there. Who determines the special way that you serve others? Who determines it? Is it up to you? What does the Bible say? Who determines it? The spirit. Look at, but it is the Spirit who does all this and decides which gifts to give each of us. It's not your choice. It's not up to us to choose. The Spirit will determine. And, and the Spirit may 
determine at a special time. Like one of those was languages. And I remember a time in my life, I think I've shared it before, uh, we were on a mission trip and somebody, we, it was over in the Tri-Cities and it was Jericho night, I, no, not Jericho night, Jericho something. And we were there and we were just relaxing one evening and uh, some, uh, there were a whole bunch of people from other churches. I mean, it just, we all converged on the Tri-Cities. And so we were at this picnic relaxing and some lady had been walking on the dike and, or the, river, the path there and met a man from Japan who didn't know English. And so she brought this man back to every, this group and, and she was asking around, does anybody know Japanese? And, and I said, well, I think our pastor's daughter, Katie Martin uh, Brown, who was a teenager then, was taking high, Japanese up at the high school. And I said, she's taking Japanese at the high school. So I connected them and, and she talked with them for a brief period of time. And then I was just sitting there and all of a sudden, I don't know how I connected with them again, but I connect, I started talking with them. Do I know Japanese? No. And he didn't know English, you know. And I don't know how it happened. Uh, Elizabeth was on one knee and Matthew was on the other knee. And, and I started sharing Jesus with him. And he gave his life to the Lord. So who did that? The Holy Spirit. He helped me to somehow understand what he was saying and he helped, the Holy Spirit helped this man somehow know what I was saying. And so he came to know Jesus and, and another person, my friend over in the Tri-Cities, uh, Gary Benfield, got him a Japanese Bible. And, you know, the Spirit decides. It's not up to us. So, you got that down? Yes. Each member has a special way of serving. God has given, if you have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, He's given you a special way to serve others. Now, I don't know what that is, but you have something. And He'll show it. He'll make it clear. Second one. Let's go on. I have to make sure it's there first. Here we go. The body of Christ has many different parts, just as any other body does. Some of us are Jews, and others are Gentile. Some of us are slaves, and others are free. But God's Spirit baptized each of us and made us part of the body of Christ. Now we each drink from that Spirit. So we're different, aren't we? Some of you are young. Some of us are old. Okay. Some of us have, I mean, I've lived my whole life in Washington. Some people are from other parts of the United States. Some are students. Some are retired. Some of you are laborers. Some of you might be, so we have doctors and nurses or teachers. Uh, you know, there's all different jobs, all different opportunities, all, all different ways of life. When I first came to Toledo, when Pastor Joe called us back in 1991 about maybe coming on staff here, Terry and I sort of laughed because <laughs> we were going, Toledo? Seriously? Working with Joe? Because I'd I known him. Seriously? We're different. And uh, as we talked, and, and uh, Pastor Joe was very honest. He said, you know, when I first started looking for an associate, I wanted somebody just like me. That's what Pastor Joe wanted. And then the body said, Pastor Joe, we love you, but we don't want somebody just like you. <laughs> you know? Because we need, huh? Well, no, it's just... <laughs> How, 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 would, how would we function if we were all the same? We wouldn't function if we were all the same. We need a lot of different people. We need different gifts, different abilities, because we're all different. And a lot of you have different 
uh, likes and different opportunities. So uh, I'm going to pick on a few people. Uh, I'm not going to pick on you if you look, you know. I'm not going to pick on you if you say me. Okay, but I, I have somebody. So some people, you know, you see some people who are serving, don't you? And they have gifts. And they're different, like Dick. Dick here. Dick, stand up. I'm going to pick on Dick. Um, Dick's, you know how many different jobs this man has in our body? A lot. Okay? You see him every week. What is, he, he, he's on the worship team. Okay? But behind the scenes, he's also, he, he does accounting for our church. He's our church treasurer. He checks the books make sure we're doing okay. He lets us know when we're not doing okay and we're overspending, which happens, okay? But he keeps track of things. And he and Connie, our secretary, work together. But I'm going to talk, I want him to share with you what it means, uh, and I have to get the mic, sorry, Dick. What it means to work on and minister with people on the worship team, okay? Because he's been playing for years. God's given him the ability to, to um, play lots of different instruments, serving on the worship team. Yeah, it's, gr- it's great. Uh, you know, it's kind of a, <laughs> if you know how to play something, come on, come on, help us. <laughs> I've been doing this over 20 years uh, on the worship team, and, you know, it's just something that I, you know, I grew up at the feet of my grandfather watching him play mandolin and, and things like that, and so I've always loved being able to do that. But, uh, you know, to have the opportunity to, to share something as special as music with other people is so important. And in my case, it's even, uh, it's even greater because I've got, you know, three of my kids that are also helping out at different times. Uh, the, the guy that usually is playing guitar up there, not, not Shelby today, but uh, the guy that's usually standing next to me up there is my son. Uh, uh, it's been great. He started with a spatula when he was a little little guy sitting on my knee, and that, so that's how he started. But God gave him the gift of music too, and uh, to be able to share that with my family is—it's uh, just been exciting, and, and not just my physical family, but my my church family as well. Uh, to be able to to experience, you know, the joy that Jesus gives us through music uh, is just—it's really special. And of course, Mike's incredible. I just really appreciate him too. So. He does a lot more than what, what you know either, too, so, yeah. That's about you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're visible. They're up front. You know, you see them every week. But there's a ton of people that work behind the scenes. Now, a lot of them aren't in here. But how many of you like to cook? Okay. We have, we have a lot of people that help. And their special way of serving is in the kitchen or putting to, serving at picnics. We just had our church picnic last Wednesday, and there were uh, some, some of our men's ministry people. They were out there barbecuing for us and setting it all up. And, but we have people Wednesday night cook. They cook meals. We have people that, that um, uh, cook at the community house. Jody. Jody's here. He's... he's He's visiting with us today. Okay? He'll probably be leaving in a few minutes, though. So I'll get him to talk while he can. Jody, stand up, because he goes to Community House. And I want him to share about what it means to serve with others there, because we have a ton of people that help there, too. The first time I got to serve at Community House was many years ago with Brenda. Uh, I can't remember her last name, but... um, Butler. It was, huh? But, Butler? Butler, Brenda Butler. Yes. That was a long time ago. And a long time ago. And, uh, and then later on, we got the opportunity to serve as a team as, as, at Community House. And, it, you know, you, you serve God by serving others. And it really is an eye-opener to understanding um, what it means to serve, to walk where Jesus walked in our modern-day times, and to love people regardless of the condition that they're in. Um, And it really helped me to love more by serving, being active. And what a blessing it is to see our young people serving alongside of me. And to interact with these people, too. To hear their stories. They're real. 
And uh, I, I've, I've never been rejected by a, a good conversation with someone. And the opportunity for us is to share the gospel, give them something to believe in, hope, the hope of heaven, that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God walks with you. He doesn't leave you nor forsake you. So it's always been a wonderful time. I, I, yeah, when I get off work, I'm super tired. Don't we get tired sometimes? But once, once I'm there, there we, we develop a relationship with them. And they look forward to seeing Toledo First Baptist Church. They call us their favorites. There's a lot of teams that go. They probably say that to everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what, though? It really makes me feel good inside. So it is an awesome opportunity, and I really encourage any of you who would want to come and, and walk where Jesus walked and to sit with them, to eat with them, fellowship with them, and say, how can I pray for you? And another one is, needs. are your needs being met? That's it. Yeah. That's it. So. And like Irma, she's gone, you've gone quite, quite a few times there. It's just a blessing. to. And the fun thing about, isn't this true, Sir Irma, we got, you, sometimes we have a big team. Some, I think Lydia's gone, and Grace, you've gone several times. I think Matthew goes. Um, the fun thing is that if we have a big team, we get done cooking really fast. We just have to wait. We have the same menu every month. We have chicken nuggets and mashed potatoes and green beans and salad. So once everything's done, we just sit around and talk and get to know each other. And so it's a blessing. Emily, I think you've gone a couple times. Uh, Louise. And so it's just a blessing. But those are opportunities. If you like to cook, um, if you notice, now, I Matthew, my son, often, he'll, he used to say it a long, a long time ago. He said, Dad, you know what? The church grounds are the best ground. I mean, it's the most beautiful building in Toledo, the grounds. Do you agree? Yeah. I mean, if you look at our grounds, we have some people that work hard on that thing. There's, there's about four people that do it all. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Two of them aren't even members of our church. They come, but they haven't officially joined yet and they just work hard they're out there working uh, one of uh, this elderly man he just, he's out there even on hot days in his long pants and he's weed eating uh, but there's opportunities if you how many of you like ground working outside on the grounds riding on a lawnmower you know yeah you know maybe you have maybe you're not doing you're, you don't have to be up front. Uh, do you see them doing it? I see them when they're doing it. But they work hard, and it's great. It's beautiful. Um, one area, maybe you're gifted, because we're all different, aren't we? Now, my dad was in construction. My dad built every house we lived in, but he stopped building when I was in sixth grade. So I didn't get any of his skills. <laughs> You know, and so, but some of you are gifted, and not just men, women are gifted at building things. I see some things that women post that they've built, and it's like, wow, you know. And so, maybe one of the areas, to be honest, and we say, talk about this as staff, is, is our building maintenance. It's a weak area in our body right now, because there are things that need to get done. Isn't it true, Danny? And who often does it, Danny? Uh, well, he's always fixing something, okay? Um, but we've not had somebody that, and we've prayed and we've asked, but we don't have somebody that'll just take that and say, I'll, be in, I'll help with the building and maintenance. I, I'm gifted in that area, and it doesn't mean you do it all. It doesn't mean you do it, but you get people say, we're going to work on this, like, one big job that has to be done this summer is painting the outside of the building. Do you think that's a big job? Yeah. Courtney's saying, I'll do it. No, Courtney. Um, but it's a job that has to be done. So building and maintenance. We're different, aren't we? Praise the Lord that we have different gifts and we're different abilities. 1 Corinthians 12, next part. 
Our bodies don't have just one part. They have many parts. And Paul here uses a a great visual. Suppose a foot. Look down at your foot. There's your foot. Preach good, Jody. There's your foot. Okay. Suppose a foot says, I'm not a hand, and so I'm not a part of the body. Okay. Could your foot say that? Does your... Your foot's a part of your body, isn't it? Okay. Or suppose an ear says, I'm not an eye, and so I'm not a part of the body. Wouldn't the ear still belong to the body? If our bodies were only an eye, we couldn't hear a thing. And if they were only an ear, we couldn't smell a thing. But God has put all parts of our body together in the way of our body. Oh, repeat there. In together in the way that he decided is best. So, I don't have any kids here, so youth, you're going to have to help me. I just have a body. So up on stage here are the parts. So could some of you youth find the parts? You come, just come on up. Just all, anybody. So now they're all up here somewhere. When you find a body part, bring it to me. Bring it here. Bring it here if you find something. So Daphne found an ear. Just put them right here. So what if we were just ears? Oh, not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay, what if we were just ears? They're blind, I guess. They're point. They're trying. I don't think there's anything there. I see an arm, but I see an arm. They're blind. They need an eye. Well, let's see what... You just keep looking. Don't talk while, I, while I'm see. So what if we were just ears? It, what would we hear? It's not in there. Don't destroy the plant. Wait, that's real? That's real. <laughs> so what, what if... We were just ears. We couldn't hear anything because no, we don't have what? Nobody found the mouth yet? Gotta have some eyes. What if we were just hands? You could do sign language, but, but nobody could what? Nobody would see your sign language, so... What if we were just eyes? We could see a whole lot, but we couldn't tell any we couldn't tell anybody what they saw. Maybe you need to come help them or something cuz I Oh. I, no, there's no eyes yet. Oh, no, I don't have a mouth. What if we were a nose? We have everything. You could smell everything. I don't have a mouth. So, oh, there's the mouth finally. Now you can go sit down. What if we were just a mouth? We would be getting in trouble all the time, wouldn't we? But nobody could hear you. So it's like, so we need, we need a mouth so we can communicate. We need eyes. So we see, we need ears, so we can hear. We need hands, so that we can do things. We need feet, so we can go places. We need a nose, so that we can smell the wonderful food that our cooks cook for us. Now, some of us are losing this top part, and so it's like, 
you know. I couldn't find, that's the part we couldn't find is the hair, but I can't find mine either. So, so we need all these parts, don't we? So we are all valuable. Does that, does that help you to see that these parts are valuable? Because without them, there are some things, maybe you, you, God's just given you that really opportunity to hear what people are saying and how people are communicating. And so you need to be that ear so that, that the body hears. Maybe you're, the, you're a mouth and you speak words of truth. We need you. You're, we're valuable. That's the next thing. Each member of the body is valuable. And it's important that we don't compare ourselves to others. Don't compare yourself to other people. You, what you, what your, gift, your gift is to build up the body. Don't compare yourself to others. Now, in my life, I've often compared myself. How many of you compare yourself to other people? I'm one of those people that I, I'm, I'm not a real people person. I don't, like one of the things I hate the most are reunions or, or any place that I have to go where I have to socialize. Like even, even like some of my children's sporting events. Now see, I know Pastor Joe, he likes to go to sporting events because he likes to talk to everybody. I just go to the sporting events so I can watch because I don't, I feel uncomfortable in how do I start a conversation with the next person? Now, if I know them, it's okay, but if I don't know them well, and so that's how it is with your reunion. I don't, I hate them. Or any things I have to go where I just have to do small talk. But when I'm serving, when I'm doing things with other people, that's awesome because then I can talk and I can talk with them and I can build relationships because I feel comfortable there. And so that is, that's me. So at times in my life, I've, why can't I, I remember even when I was a first youth pastor a long time ago, I thought, why can't I be more like that youth pastor? Well, that's not how God made me. Okay? And so God makes us all different. Don't compare yourself to others. Next verses. A body isn't really a body unless there is more than one part potato head it takes many parts to make a single body that's why the eyes cannot say they don't need the hands so hold up your hands and look at them and say I don't need you hands can you do that but how many times in the body we might get our feel we might get our feelings hurt or that person is just a little different than we are. And so we say, I don't need that person. Do you, have you been there? Yes. I've been there just yesterday. Okay, thank you, Elena. <laughs> um, and also, so what, how about the head? That's also why the head cannot say it doesn't need the feet. I don't need you. I think I need my feet, okay? I'm, I'm not going to get anywhere, okay? In fact, we cannot get along without the parts of the body that seem to be the weakest. There's some parts of your body that might be weak, but we need them. We take special care to dress up some parts of our body, and we should take special care to, to dress modestly, we are, but there are other parts that we don't have to be modest about. We don't have to be modest about my elbow. Okay? It's, you know? Unless, you're, uh, unless you have a really ugly elbow or something. God put our bodies together in such a way that even the parts that seem the least important are valuable. He did this to make all parts of the body work together smoothly with each part caring about others. Now, I'm, this person doesn't know I'm going to pick on them. 
okay? I'm not going to pick them. But I just want to tell you about a part, of, a part of the ministry in our body that's one of those little things that you don't ever see. And I'm picking on this person because she used to do this job, okay? This is Jan Beers, okay? And so, Jan, you used to, where did you used to serve? I used to serve in the baptistry ante room there. That, that room, that door over there. Yeah which is where the Baptist changing, the baptistry changing rooms are. But there's a couple rooms back there that people change to get ready for Baptist. And what did you do to help them? I helped them find a robe that would fit them and help them um, helped circulate people through those rooms mm -hmm. when there were a lot of people mm -hmm. being baptized. It was kind of tricky sometimes. It was, yeah. <laughs> And it's an important oh. job, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and I saw to it that the robes got washed and dried yeah. after. So that they didn't get all mildewy back there. Mm -hmm. But it's important, isn't it? It is. And, it is. and it's valuable because um, how, if you've been baptized, and we hear about this all the time, when you're baptized, do you get, are you getting nervous back there? Was it scary to get baptized? Some of you, I mean, I hear a lot. It's scary, Green, and Greenlee's pretty out there, spoke, you know, she's very active in a lot of things, but she was nervous. And so it's nice just having somebody back there. Well, we don't have somebody right at the moment back there. We had somebody, but now we don't. And so that's a job that could be filled. Uh, we have a man, uh, Kim Lyon has been filling that baptistry forever, ever since I've been here. He lives close, and so he just, whenever we have a baptism, we call him and say, Kim, Get, we need a, somebody baptized and you fill it up and he fills it up gets it all ready so it's heated okay there's another thing and some of you might be some of this person it's, it's, it involves food but it, 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 it's where it's called our meals ministry and our meals ministry is anybody participate in that anybody do the meals ministry here you've been a recipient Kaylee was that special just a second, just a second, just a second. Kaylee, she's sp speaking up so I can come. Tell us the, how, what it means to be a recipient. It was amazing. Um, we had a brand new baby boy um, a year and a half ago, and the meals ministry showed up to our house about six or seven times with cooked meals, so we didn't have to worry about it, and all we had to worry about was making sure our baby boy was all taken care of, and so it was, it was absolutely amazing. It was definitely one of those things that you don't think about that, that means a lot to people, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And so you can, you, it's just whenever you're called. Like right now we're taking one of the men in our church um, broke his ankle in two places. And so they're taking meals in and, and his wife posted on Facebook yesterday how much she appreciated that. And that is some, a little something that you could do. And we have two ladies, Kay Lyon and Nita Bergman, that heads that up. And they, when we'll, the office will call and say, let's provide meals for them. And they do, you know, and they arrange it all. They don't do it all, but there's a lot of people that, that do that. And it's a great way that you can communicate, that you can get connected with people and, and serve people. Okay, so those are just some behind the scene things. Our sound back there is behind the scene. You can turn around and look at them, wave at them. Like right now, you know what they're doing for, for the body? They're, they are recording this service, on fate, so it'll be on Facebook Live. So hi, everybody turn at the camera and say, hi, everybody watching. Hi, everybody watching. Okay. And a lot of people are appreciating that. Like if you're sick, and you can, or if you're out of town and you want to watch it, you can watch it. Uh, it's very, but they're doing that. But you know, there's only about three or four people that serve in that area. And you know, right now, most they, um, we need more people. Now, remember, see the words up there? That's part of what they do too. And there's, we need people to do that. So it's not just, them. And what's cool right now is Matthew just got it so that we can do that on tablets, our tablets. And so you can be sitting right where you're sitting and you can 
control. But we need people that are trusted, not just that'll play with it and send them. But we need people. So that might be, maybe you're really a techie kind of person and, and you like, whether you're a female or male or young or old, um, that might be some place you can plug in. So from that, we see that every, each member of the body is needed. You are needed. You are, you are needed to step up and to do your part. And it's not a guilt trip time. It's, this is just what God's word saying. God has equipped you with a special way to serve. Next part. If one part of our body hurts, we hurt all over. If one part of our body is honored, the whole body will be happy. In that previous scripture, it said, he did this to make all parts of the body work together smoothly, each with each part caring about the others. Each member of the body must care for the other part. So that's the last one you, you write down. You must care. Have you ever had something you, I don't know, like have you ever hurt your little toe? Did it affect your whole body? Have you ever had, I hate these and I've had a lot of them, canker sores? I remember one time, a long time ago, I was leading worship at a, a previous church, and I had like five or six canker sores in my mouth at the same time. I was sick. I was playing. I told everybody in the congregation, I'm playing the piano today, but I'm not singing. You're singing. When, one part, the other day, I, I ate something, and I cut, I got a cut on the slip of my tongue. Have you ever done that? And you're, it's just a little paper cut or something, and it hurts. And it affects your whole body. It's like, oh, it's just on my tongue, but my toe hurts. You know, our body feels those pains, and we should feel each other's pains when we're hurting. When one of us is hurting, we should hurt. We should feel bad. We should help. We should care. And when one person is honored, like... At the early service, uh, some of our grounds people were here, and I just said, you know, let's give them a hand. And they applauded them. Those are, we should be, when somebody's honored, I don't, you know, it's not that Joanna did much, but we went down to the parade yesterday, and I don't know how many people said, oh, Joanna was on the front of the Chronicle, the newspaper. She was, at, we were at the frog jumping contest in the, the photographer took her picture and so but I didn't even know it and all the I mean we, she was just on the front of the chronicle and people were excited about it you know so think about if we do something that for the Lord and how great it is so care care and rejoice when people are happy so the last verse here it is first Corinthians 12 27 together you are the body of Christ each one of you is part of his body. Now youth, and this doesn't matter if you're young or old, if you, have con if you have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are part of the body. You're not waiting to become a part of the body. You are the part of the body, and God expects you to serve and to follow him and to do the same thing. Kids, when they're, there'll be kids at 11, and I'll tell them, Kids, if you've confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, you have, you you need to serve the body. Adults, you need to serve the body. Now we've focused a lot on kids' ministries, and look at on your next step card. There's a green card somewhere. Green card. Now you can fill it. That's a green card behind you. That's for you to. So in, in here, there's a lot of different ministries. And the first, the key thing here on the next step, I need to step up and start serving. Maybe God's just saying, I need to step up and start serving. I need to do something. God wants me to. So here's some opportunities, and you can just check 
one. They, none of them involve teaching at all. Like the first one, hospitality ministry. These are the people that greet you when you come in the door. They, ha they give you a bulletin. They say, hi, how are you today? They make coffee. Okay. Now, Karen Bell, our secretary, is in charge of this ministry. And what she tells us, it's so hard to find people who are willing to do it. Now, in my mind, I think serving in the preschool department or hospitality. I know it. That's what I think. But here she is telling me how hard it is to get people to greet. I'm going, I don't get it. You know, like we'd like to have lots of people, even some, we want people in here. Not just out there, but people that will come and say, hi, how are you today? Like there was a man, Roger, he was in the early service. I didn't know him. So during the service, I went up and said, hi, I'm Roger. Or hi, you're Ro who are you? I don't know you. <laughs> you're Roger. And Roger, everybody else in the congregation said, hi, Roger. You know, we need people that can greet in here. And, and it'd be great night to have hospitality people who will walk people down to the children's department downstairs or down to the preschool department if they're new. So maybe you like to greet people. Check that one. Food and Fellowship Committee ministry. If you like to cook and would like to do those special events. Meals ministry. You heard about it. And maybe you want, you can do that. You're not, it's not every week. It's whenever it's needed. Uh, ladies ministry. We have a ladies team that does a lot to help our ladies. Men's ministry. Uh, man camp is coming up in a month, in a month where they're going up into Lake Packwood and they go in for the week and you can go in for a day and they're willing to help you. You can sign up for that out in the foyer. Grounds, maybe you like to work. You like to drive a, a, a lawnmower, you know? Uh, building and maintenance, maybe you wanna, you'd want you like to help with that. Audiovisual, people sign up, okay? Um, music ministry, Join, if, you, if you're gifted in music, come up. So that's step up. You'll be blessed. Serving together. I love to serve with other people. 